In this video, we're going to take a look at the all new Adobe Captivate Tabs widget. Okay, I've pretty much explored all of the widgets at this point. This is the last one I did. The reason I saved this for last is that there was a little bug in the first release of Adobe Captivate 12. And uh, I'm happy to report that with the first update, so if you're on 12.1, you should see this interaction working beautifully. Um, my advice about using any type of click to reveal where you're clicking on a button to change the state of a multi-state object or a widget in this case, don't go overboard. You don't need five, six tabs. Once you start getting into that range, my advice would be to switch to a carousel so that you can have more real estate for the interaction and less for the, all the buttons that it requires. But certainly, you know, three, four tabs is really good. I'm going to do a four tab interaction for you today. Let's take a look. Okay, to add a new tabs widget, you simply click on the add new widget icon in your toolbar on the left hand side of your page and select tabs. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use a different theme. And this is a theme that I built using Theme Builder in Adobe Captivate. If you'd like to learn about that, I've got a video on it that you can watch right here. But to access your themes, you simply go to the project properties. The icon for that is in the bottom right hand corner. We click that and we will select either change theme if you haven't imported it before or you can click the plus icon to import it if you have it stored somewhere else on your computer. So a couple things have changed, the, the heading I'm using, the font that I'm using, and so forth. For this particular tabs widget, I've got to make some changes. So first things we're going to do is go to Visual Properties and just click on the theme itself to see all the properties for this particular widget. Collapsed is the alignment and spacing. You can do things like tighten up the spacing between content and you can reduce the amount of space that the content uses here. So for example, I could set this at 80% if I'd like more white space on either side here. I'm going to stick with the 92 because one of the things that I think about frequently is what's it going to look like on mobile. So when you view it on mobile, you have very limited space on the device screen. So you might want to maximize that as I've done here. Okay, I've gone back up to desktop view here and we're going to start to customize our content. I can collapse the alignment and spacing section here. And the first thing I need to change is the number of tabs. For this interaction, I need four tabs. The default is three, so we're just going to change that here. Obviously, there's a variety of different design options that you can start from. I'm kind of happy with this layout, so I'm going to stick with that. But feel free to explore the other options and see how they change the interaction for you. Now, with all widgets and blocks, you can select which components of that widget or block that you're going to use. You have title, of course, image, heading, subtitle, body, card if you wish to have it or the previous and next button i'm going to leave most of these in place here but i'm going to get rid of the heading and the body and i'm just going to use the subtitle for the text in here now because i'm using a back and forward button one of the choices that you may wish to make is to provide your own navigation throughout your course you may wish to turn off the play bar that's built in. You can turn off any of the individual elements of the play bar or turn it off entirely. I'm going to do that. So the first thing I'm going to do is provide a heading for this tab widget. I'm going to simply copy and paste the, the text that I want for this interaction. And one by one, I'm going to add the tab titles for each of these here. Now the case is set up to be all uppercase for my tabs. I'd actually like to change that. And the reason for that is that it'll give me more room for uh, the titles or, or the headings of each tab. 
So I can go into the appearance properties. This is a change you can make at the theme level as well. But for right now, I'm just going to change this to title case. And we'll do the same thing for the other tabs as well. And you'll notice that with the, the last tab, obviously, it prevented it from going to a second line, which is helpful. Now, for each of your tabs, you do have multi-states. So if you wish to customize those, you can click on the states and show and see all the states that are available. So when you move your mouse over one of these tabs, they will change to this blue background with the white text. And when you click on them, it'll change to a very dark gray with the white text. I'm okay with these, so I'm not going to customize those. So the first thing I'm going to do is starting with the first tab, I'm going to populate the text with the text that I have mined for this interaction. So we'll just paste that in and we can right click on the image and replace this image with an image of your own choosing. You can either go to the assets store in Adobe Captivate or you can select your own image that you wish to use. I'm going to choose my own image here. And then just like I'm using the interaction, I can click on each of these tabs and start to customize them. So I'll start by copying and pasting the text I want for tab number two. And we'll right click on the image and replace that image with one that I have in mind for this particular step. And then I'll select the third tab and I'll copy and paste the text I want to use for that. And like before, we'll right click on the image and replace the image with one that I've planned out for this particular interaction. And last but not least, we'll, we'll select the final tab here. I'll copy and paste the text for that. Looks like I accidentally populated the fourth tab with my first tab stuff. So we'll update that to correct that mistake there. And we'll choose the appropriate image here. There, I think we got it right. There are other things that you can customize as well. I'm kind of partial to combining both iconography and words. Uh, let's do that in this case here. So if we select our back button, we can make some changes here. First thing we can do is select a text button style if we wish to use that. But if you still want to maintain an icon, we can certainly do that by going to the icon tab, turning on the ability to add an icon, and then we can select an icon from the asset store if we wish, or if you have access to your own icons, you certainly could use those as well. So let's find an icon that looks like we're going to the previous slide. This works well, I think. And just make sure the color is going to match your text. And we could do the same thing for the forward as well. So we'll select the black button for that. We'll choose the icon. And in this case here, we'll select something that looks like we're moving forward in the e-learning course. There it is. Replace that icon. And in this case here, I'd prefer the arrow to be on the other side of the word next. So you can select the position from here. And also we want to obviously make sure that that icon is white. Okay, so I'm just going to double check that I've set this up, looks right. So let's do a preview of this on our desktop here and see how it works. All right, so when we start off, of course, the next button is disabled until we go through all of the four steps of conflict resolution. And once we get to the end, our next button is made available to us. Okay, I think at this point here, we should take a look at it on a mobile device and make sure it looks good there as well. So we're going to generate the device preview, which is a QR code. And then I'm simply going to use my mobile phone to open that up in my browser of choice. And here we go. So you can see that it's rearranged the content to be more vertical. Again, my next button is disabled but I can still hit all those tabs and of course complete the interaction and then my next button is now available.
If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com. And don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.